Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're creating a simple looping background in Cinema 4D. Okay, we've got a nice easy one today. Let's get straight into it. Let's come up here and set our scene up. We want to change this to 1920 by 1080. We'll go HD as usual and 24 frames a second. Let's close that up, hit Control D, and we'll make sure that's 24 frames a second as well. We want our looping background to be five seconds long. So 24 frames a second times five gives us 120. Let's put that in here and stretch that out. Okay, our background is gonna be made of hexagons. So let's come up here and we'll grab the hexagon looking end side spline. Let's just frame that up a bit. The next thing we want to do is give this some thickness. So we'll come up here and we'll grab an extrude. Let's hold Alt when we click that. So it automatically applies to our hexagon, just like that. We want to extrude this out in the Z axis here. So over here in our movement settings, we'll change this from 20 to a thousand centimeters, I think should do it. We don't want these edges to be so sharp. So let's come over to caps and we'll change these to fillet caps. Let's just put two in for the steps and eight centimeters for the radius for both of these. We'll come down and hit the constraint box here so our extrude doesn't push the edges outward. I think that should do us for the shape for now. We want loads of these to fill up our background. So with it selected, let's come up to MoGraph and we'll bring in a cloner. Remember to hold Alt so it automatically applies. It's cloning straight up in the Y axis at the moment, which we don't want. Let's come down here and change the mode from linear to honeycomb array. And because our shape is already hexagonal, that'll fix it straight away. Let's just get this into position. I think we could probably do with a few more of these. Let's go back to our cloner options here and we'll change the count width to 20 and the count height to 22. Now we've got loads more in the X and Y. I think it might be time to bring in a camera. So let's go up here and click that. Then we'll click on this symbol to turn it on and we'll come down to the coordinates and zero all these out. Then we'll just pull out in the negative Z direction, something like that, and we're all set. Let's make this animate. Basically, we want all of these guys to move around randomly in the Z direction. So let's grab our cloner. And the way we're gonna do it is under MoGraph, Effector, we'll bring in a shader effector. And don't worry if everything goes white. They're just all overlapping each other at the moment. We can see that a bit clearer if we come up to display and turn on those lines. Maybe if we turn this camera off for a second, you can see it a bit easier. Let's come down to our parameter tab here and see what's going on. So when you bring a shader effector in, it automatically applies the scale and that's why everything's overlapping. So let's just turn that off. We want it to affect the position in the Z axis. So let's turn that on and down here where it says Z, you can play around with that. Let's just set it to something like 600 for now. We want to randomize this a bit so they're not all going back together. And the way we're going to do that is by adding some noise to our shader effector. So over in our shading tab, we'll come down here and click this little arrow next to shader. Then we'll come up to noise. And now we're talking. Let's come back here and click into this noise. And before we go any further, let's just see if this is animating yet. If we hit play, you'll see that nothing's happening. All we need to do is come back to our noise and we just need to add a value to this animation speed setting. Let's try something like 0.5 for now. And we'll go and hit play again. Looking good. Let's turn that camera back on again and get this framed up. If we let it play through, you can see it's not looping just yet, but that's easy to fix. If we come back over here, the setting that we need is this one right here, the loop period. Basically, it's how long in seconds we want the noise to animate before it loops. And we already know that our 120 frames is five seconds of 24 frames a second. So if we just put five seconds in here, we should be good to go. Let's give that a whirl. And there you go. That's pretty much our looping animated background. And of course you can frame this up a bit better and you're not limited to this sort of shape. You can use anything you want. For example, we could come up and grab a cube and if we delete this guy and bring our cube in, that's instantly updated. And if we play that through, 
it should still loop nicely. Cool. And for a cube, you probably don't want to use the honeycomb array. So if we come back to our cloner and under the object tab, under mode, let's change this back to grid array. Then we'll crank up the count in the X and the Y. And we'll bring the count in the Z axis back to one. Then down at size, we'll crank that up in the X and the Y until we get something like that. And we'll play that back. And just like that, you've got yourself a looping background with cubes instead. And that brings us to the end of this week's tutorial. As usual, you can download the project file below to save a bit of time. And you can find a whole bunch of extra stuff on our Patreon page. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section below. Or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.